Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to test this device which is uh, shown on the top of my desk and uh, this device is a 240 watts uh, Peltier cooler powered uh, cold plate. So I will use this or parts of this uh, device for my upcoming project and uh, before directly uh, using it in that project, I thought that I must uh, test this carefully to see first if it uh, fits my uh, application properly and also I wanted to see this thing uh, in and out so I can use it maybe in a more uh, appropriate way and also I can share the conclusions of this device uh, with you so if you are planning to buy this thing then uh, you can see what you can expect from this. So, first of all, uh, as I said, this is a cold plate. So now we are looking at the back side of it, where we can see these four fans attached uh, to two heat sinks. So here, uh, there is one heat sink, and uh, here, behind these two fans, uh, there is another heat sink. Uh, probably you can see it better if I show it this way. So you can see that here, uh, they are separated and then here you can see the gap uh, which is filled in with some kind of uh, insulating foam but in between this heat sink and uh, this plate uh, which still has its original uh, protective foil on uh, lies four uh, Peltier coolers and then uh, of course this uh, side here with the protective foil still on is the cold side so this will uh, become cold and then uh, since this side becomes cold and then the heat sink is on the other side we can already guess uh, the orientation of the Peltier coolers so the cold side is of course connected to this uh, cold plate and then the hot side is cooled by these uh, uh, heat sinks and uh, the 240 watts is a very misleading uh, data when it comes to this device in fact, uh, I haven't opened this yet, we will open it very soon, but uh, by uh, looking at the data of this uh, device and seeing that it says 240 watts, I can uh, assume that the four Peltier coolers, which can be found here, are four uh, TEC-1206 uh, uh, Peltier coolers. And why I'm uh, guessing it? is because each of these coolers can provide 60 watts of cooling power each and 4 times 60 happens to be exactly 240 but there is a catch I put the figure here and you see that if we are looking at the performance chart of, of this uh, Peltier cooler then when you have 60 watts of cooling power you barely have any temperature difference between the two sides uh, which means that yeah, you can move a bunch of heat uh, from the cold side uh, to the hot side, which is basically the purpose of a Peltier cooler, uh, but uh, you cannot generate a large uh, temperature gradient. So you have to choose, of course, and I always emphasize it in every of my, uh, or in all of my Peltier cooler videos, that there is a trade-off. It's carved into a stone, at least uh, according to the current technology, and either you have a large temperature uh, gradient between the cold side and the hot side or you can move a lot of heat uh, from the cold side to the hot side and uh, obviously in this case when you expect to have 240 watts of cooling power then you cannot really have uh, too much uh, temperature uh, difference between the cold side and the hot side so yeah uh, I'm not having high expectations with this uh, device uh, as a first guess. So I already made some uh, cabling because I just wanted to test uh, if everything is fine uh, electrically and then I decided to do the following thing. Uh, we have four Peltier coolers and I uh, wired them in uh, pairs. So we have two pairs of Peltier coolers. One pair is here and another pair is here. and uh, I just rotate this so here we have uh, four cables two positive two negative and that collects everything into one cable 
or one pair of cables, as you can see here. And then, of course, for these two Peltier coolers, we have, again, another pair uh, held uh, together with just this uh, Vago uh, copy clips. These are super good clips, actually. And uh, then they will be connected parallel. So each pair is run uh, on, on parallel uh, supply. And then uh, here I have another uh, bunch, which I just uh, yeah, watched uh, together. It's the four uh, fans uh, in, in parallel again. And uh, they will be powered uh, with 12 volts uh, supply voltage. And uh, that will just uh, provide the cooling. So what I'm uh, going to do here first before disassembling it and seeing the inside and seeing whether we have uh, four of these uh, 12706 or not is that I will flip this, expose the uh, cold side towards the camera, then uh, I will grab a thermocouple, glue it on the exact center or not glue it but uh, I will use a tape. So I will put it right here. And then uh, I will run this at a uh, certain uh, power. And then we will see what is the temperature that we can uh, achieve on the cold side. And to run the Peltier coolers, I created this kind of uh, supply system. So right here, I have a 400 watt of uh, power supply, DC 24 volts and 16.7 uh, amps, as you can probably see here. So that is 400 watts. And then uh, I split uh, the output into two uh, rails. And each of these rails have their own SZBK07 uh, uh, DC DC converter. I found them very easy to use, so I like to use them for my uh, projects. And then uh, each of these rail will run uh, two parallel uh, connected uh, Peltier coolers. And uh, just uh, with some hand waving numbers, uh, we know that this uh, Peltier cooler is, it has a maximum of 6 amps current, but we know that it has a certain sweet spot where uh, the joule heating, which is generated by the current running through the device, is not yet overpowering the Peltier cooling, uh, and that is around 5 amps. So I will run maximum 5 amps through each of these devices. So we have four of these devices, which means that uh, roughly uh, 20 amps will run through the wall uh, thing and each rail, so each of these uh, supplies will, uh, will uh, provide 10 amps, roughly. Uh, we will see. So, so that's that. I will uh, use some uh, screwdriver and then just adjust the voltages and everything. And then the question is that how will I uh, power or how will I monitor the power uh, of these things because now it's very meticulous and the, if you seen if you have seen my previous video then I made these guys so I have these nice uh, DC power meters and uh, if you remember in my previous video I had some issues uh, when I built this thing because the uh, polarity let's call it like that or the uh, pin layout was different from my uh, OLED display but I made a solution, well, not the nicest one, but uh, I figured it out that I can manually just solder everything. So I just made a cross uh, connection between uh, the ground and uh, the VCC. And then now I can uh, use my uh, power meter. So, uh, so basically each of these uh, power meters will be connected to one of these uh, rails here. And uh, also here. And then uh, power goes through these and then go through, go to the Peltier coolers uh, to the corresponding uh, side. And then I can adjust uh, yeah, the converters. And then I will just let uh, the device uh, run and we will see where is the temperature uh, where we have like a stabilized uh, condition of, of the system. So when we don't really see any more of a change. And uh, I will leave this uh, surface exposed to the air. So that means also that uh, there is a lot of uh, heat entering the uh, cold side. 
and then we will see how the system will uh, deal with that. So now I wire up everything and then uh, we can uh, perform the experiment. Okay, so I have assembled the system and uh, half of the things is not really visible, but uh, you have to trust me with these things. And I will also upload the schematics for my power supply rail or system for this thing uh, on my website. So check the link in the description and you will see some yeah, additional information. But yeah, you can see that uh, I glued uh, the thermocouple here with a tape. And we are measuring room temperature so everything is pretty much room temperature here and uh, i will use another uh, thermocouple just to monitor for example the hot side uh, by touching it uh, to the uh, heat sink so from the bottom now you can see that uh, there is a reasonable gap here so i put some uh, cup under the uh, fans so they can uh, suck up enough air there is a yeah rather wide gap, like uh, 12, 15 centimeters roughly, uh, between the surface of the table and uh, the beginning of the fence. So that should be enough. So I will measure the hot side uh, uh, temperature and uh, see if every, anything happens. And then, uh, yeah, so on the left hand side, you can see here is our power supply. Power goes to one of these uh, DC DC converter, and then it goes through one of the power meters and then it goes to the uh, pair of uh, Peltier coolers. So each of these, once again, uh, powers two Peltier coolers, which are uh, connected parallel to these. So I start up the fans, so you might hear some noise soon. And now I'm just uh, cooling the Peltier coolers uh, from below. And uh, the heat sinks are aligned in this way. Uh, in respect uh, to the surface so actually air is coming out at the bottom so towards this way and also that way uh, being pushed out uh, because the fans suck in the air and push it against uh, the uh, heat sink so now i turn on the power supply this guy but i don't yet turn on the dc dc converters uh, they have a small switch you can see it here at my index finger and uh, that has to be also turned on to actually turn on the whole thing. And the other DC-DC converter is just here. I just could not uh, make it uh, to fit the screen or fit uh, the, uh, the recorded area. So that's what we have. I turn on the power supply. So. Now I just have to turn on the, each of these individual uh, DC-DC converters. So let's see what happens. I just use some plastic. So now this is on. And then the guy here is also on. You can see the LED. So let me show you some characteristics, but you can immediately see that the temperature started to drop. So now the pair, which is on this side, is running at 12.9 uh, uh, volts and 8.2 amps. And then this rail also gets uh, similar uh, characteristics. Uh, unfortunately you cannot see it because it flickers but also 12.9 watts and uh, 8.2 amps so they are running roughly at the same power so I let this run for a while and uh, let everything uh, equalize and we will see what will happen but I let uh, the video to be recorded so you get the time lapse of uh, everything uh, happening So let's look at the system. 
you can see that the surface temperature is now 2.4 degrees Celsius. This is after roughly 8 minutes of uh, running and you can also see a lot of uh, dew on the surface because obviously the surface is uh, below the dew point of my uh, room. So then uh, the humidity from the air started to condense on the surface. But it did not start to freeze yet. Uh, obviously you can see it that we are above the freezing temperature. So even after 10 minutes I was not able to cool down this uh, plate uh, below the freezing point of the water, uh, which is a bit uh, disappointing. However, if I look at the power meters, so one guy here and another guy here, you can see the slight uh, flickering at the right, uh, bottom uh, left corner of this uh, cooling plate, I can see that there is only 7.6 amps uh, running through uh, this rail and the other is also 7.55 amps. If you divide it by two, let's say rounding it uh, up a little bit, it's uh, 3.8 amps per Peltier cooler. That is kind of far away from the idea of 5 amps. So I can increase the voltage a little bit and see if I can further uh, push down uh, the, the temperature. So I'm now uh, trying to increase the voltage on the output of the buck converters, both of these. So this one and then the other here and uh, see what happens. And uh, luckily these uh, power monitors are really fast in response. So I can almost immediately see if I change the voltage and then I can adjust uh, accordingly. And I also see the current, which is my main indicator for uh, the power supplied to the Peltier coolers. So I increase the voltage, so it's 14.5 volts uh, on both uh, rails. And now the current on uh, this pair, so these two guys, is 8.5 amps divided by 2, so 4.25 roughly per, uh, per device. So each of the Peltier coolers uh, have 4.25 amps running through, it, running through it. And then uh, on the top, uh, so up here, it's 14.5 uh, also and 8.4 amps, so 4.2 amps, almost identical, it doesn't matter, uh, it's a small difference, but uh, you can see that uh, we did not even get a small change in the temperature, or not a noticeable one, and I can tell you why, uh, these heat sinks are not sufficient, so now the problem is that uh, we cannot push the uh, cold side temperature further down, because we cannot cool uh, the Peltier coolers good enough and uh, I can try to measure the hot side temperature and uh, see if we can get any uh, interesting values. So now I just uh, put it here, just follow my finger, so at the end of this uh, heat sink and I just uh, warm up the tip of the uh, thermocouple with the air. You can, you can see it down here. I will put an arrow there with the video uh, editing. And you can see that this is the outlet air temperature and it's pretty much hot. Like it's uh, 40 degrees Celsius or 42, 43. So it gets warm. And then if I go in Uh, then I reach almost 50 degrees and you can see one problem that if I touch the metal then the temperature changes there is something wrong with these uh, thermocouples or uh, with the circuit I don't know but I try to go in just to see uh, the temperature more deeper so it seems that there is something fishy going on with this uh, probe so I'm not going to force it too much but you can see that already the outlet air temperature is 40, 45 degrees uh, Celsius, which is uh, quite high. 
So you can imagine how hot uh, the heatsink can be and how hot the real hot side can be. And that's why we cannot generate a large enough uh, temperature gradient between the cold side and the hot side. So I stopped the experiment here and uh, we will disassemble this board or this uh, plate and we will see what is inside and then I will try to uh, reassemble and uh, see if I can uh, make things better. Okay, so here is the uh, cold plate and uh, I'm just going to remove all these uh, things that we can see on the heat sinks and then we will see uh, what is underneath them. And unfortunately this is assembled in a stupid way, so I have to remove these uh, things first, these protective uh, metal pieces, and then I can access uh, the bolts or screws here. So let's do that. Actually I was wrong, I could just pop these up or pop these out like this, so yeah. So, after discovering my mistake, uh, we can remove the heat sinks. So as you can see, we have those eight uh, bolts, two, four, six, eight. And then uh, this plate is actually threaded. So there are threads here. So there is no nut holding against uh, or holding into the bolts. So I just unscrew them and then we will see how it works. But I just remove one side at a time and then uh, we can learn from that probably and we can see if we have to remove the other side too. So first a smart thing that we can see is well actually I can do this so you can see that uh, those holes are a little bit oval shaped so then this plastic here can fit into it so the heat uh, coming from the bolt is not directly uh, transferred to the cold side. What I try to mean is that uh, there is some insulation, which is this plastic, in between the hot heat sink and the cold, cold plate. Because obviously this bolt is uh, bolted into these holes, which are part of the cold plate. And of course, uh, if we have a hot uh, heat sink, and then we have a direct contact, a direct metallic contact, contact uh, to the cold plate, then of course we just degrade the performance of this thing. So then that's really nice that uh, they thought about this and they put some, uh, let's call it thermal barrier uh, as that plastic thingy. And now this is the back side and maybe we can reveal something. Well, 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 this is not even the 6 ampere unit, but it's the 5 amp unit. I hope you can see it there. Uh, so this is the TEC12705. So it's even worse than I expected, but uh, which is even worse is that these heat sinks cannot even maintain uh, the low temperature of the hot side or relatively low temperature of the hot side with a weaker uh, Pathia cooler. So that's uh, sad, but uh, yeah, what can we do? So then on this side, uh, we can see that uh, this is the insulating foam, so from side view. And then here one of the Pathia cooler got stuck to the cold side, not anymore. So that's what we have there. And this is also a 5 ampere unit, as you can see. 12705. So one thing I can do here is I can try to clean these surfaces and then add uh, a new layer of uh, thermal grease uh, just to yeah, have a better, hopefully better thermal connection between the sides. And then we will see if that helps, but uh, then let's open this first. So 
So this is the other, and you can see this. And I also discovered something not so good, is that one of these corners are broken. You can see the crack there. It doesn't really uh, degrade the performance of these uh, Patia coolers, but it is something that uh, could be better. And also, you can see that uh, the, the thermal grease is kind of dry because here I managed to uh, pick up the wall layer from here. So yeah, that's not the best. So they could have applied a bit more grease uh, just for a better thermal transfer. But at least uh, they took care of this. Uh, we can do some measurements. So it's about two, two and a half millimeters thick uh, foam here. And then if that is two and a half millimeters, then this one is nearly 7.5. So this is four or five millimeters thick roughly. Four and let's call it four. So we have a four millimeter thick aluminum plate here, this guy. And then it's insulated by two millimeters thick insulation here. So it's some kind of insulating foam. So I will clean these and then uh, I will try to reassemble it and see if I messed it up or not. So I cleaned these coolers as much as I could uh, clean them. You can see that they are still a little bit gray uh, because the thermal grease uh, really got stuck uh, into the pores uh, of this ceramic plate. Uh, so that's that. And I could see that uh, they probably put a bit too much pressure on these uh, screws or uh, the surfaces either here or here are not perfectly flat uh, because yeah the, the cracks are everywhere you can see it here as well that it's full of cracks so yeah that's not nice so then uh, I'm going to apply thermal grease this guy it's relatively fresh on each of these uh, squares uh, four by four centimeter squares and then put these in with their cold side facing these uh, plates and then uh, grease their back side, the hot side and then mount this. So uh, you will see how I struggle with that part now. So it is assembled and I hopefully applied enough uh, torque to the screws to have yeah, enough pressure between the Peltier cooler uh, and uh, these two metal parts, the cold side and the heat sinks, but low enough pressure that I did not break them. So yeah, we will see. It's hard to feel it, but I at least uh, did not hear any cracking sound. So uh, that's nice. And then uh, uh, let's see what we have here. So. I have these fans. These are actually, if I show it properly, 12 volt, 0 0.2 amps. So I can show you something a bit cooler. How about this? 12 volt and uh, 1.85 amps. These are the so-called end minor fans, which you could have seen in one of my very old videos with uh, Peltier coolers. So you can see that I have already put the screws at the diagonals because my plan is this. Uh, I have one here. And there is another. Of course. So the plan is to somehow yeah, mount them like this. And uh, yeah cool everything with these and minor fans. Uh, so we will see. It will be very noisy, but uh, it, it should be much colder than, than with the other fans. So let me mount them and uh, then we will see if uh, this will be better. So as you can see, it's solid enough because I'm holding the heat sink together with these fans. So then I will just have to find out a way how to 
uh, leave enough space here so I can uh, get enough air to these fans. So now the fans will blow against uh, these heat sinks and uh, yeah, that's how they will uh, cool this uh, stuff. And the one thing I have to do is that I will just put some ferrules on this, like similar, similar ending as we have for this guy here. And then uh, we will be ready to test. So let me do this and then I will get back to you with the completed test system. So I assembled everything and how I solved uh, the space uh, problem under this uh, heatsink is that I used another heatsink. So they are, there are two heatsinks standing vertically. One at uh, this corner where there is a free space because of the alignment with the big fans. And then yeah, the other is uh, towards the right side, the bottom right corner. Then uh, I wired up everything. Power supply is on, but uh, the converters are not yet on. So you can see that it's 25.2 uh, degrees Celsius. So everything is at room temperature now. And uh, I left uh, the settings for the buck converters at the same setting that I was using previously. So 4 point something amps uh, per unit. And hopefully my uh, thermal grease was sufficient. So we will see. Uh, but first I turn on the fans and then I will stop talking because uh, it will be noisy as heck. Uh, you will see it. And uh, then probably I will just put some subtitles under the video or, or something like that. But uh, I will turn on the, the fans to start cooling the heatsink. And then I turn on these uh, two uh, back controllers and we just wait uh, for 5-10 yeah, minutes again. So fans are on now. So I stopped the experiment and you can see that the temperature is increasing uh, rapidly immediately and I just covered this with paper to uh, soak up the excess humidity. There's no ice but uh, you could see for a while that the temperature went below zero degrees but when I entered the room since this is exposed and uh, it is also exposed to the draft to the movement of the air and everything I pretty much uh, uh, destroyed uh, the equilibrium here and uh, then of course uh, the cold side started to become warmer and warmer and uh, yeah that's that but uh, you could see that with some extra airflow at least I could go down below uh, zero degrees Celsius so that was a little bit of a gain but uh, still it was not enough and uh, in the meantime uh, while I was waiting for this for 10 minutes, so this has been running for roughly 10 minutes, uh, I looked at the data sheet of this uh, 12705, and actually this is not even 240 watt. Uh, it cannot provide that much. Uh, the, the, let's say, top or highest uh, parameters of this is around 43 to 46 watts. Uh, that is far away. So if you multiply that by four, there is no chance that uh, that turns out to be 240. So I don't know how they calculated it, but my guess is that originally there should be uh, 12706 Peltier cooler on, 
on this uh, cold plate, but for some reason they just maybe they only had uh, 12705 and they installed those or something like that. But uh, then this also shows that I got some wrong products. So I have to, I don't know, uh, complain to the seller or something, but uh, I don't really care because I will uh, yeah, rebuild this uh, thing into something more uh, exciting. And I will make sure that uh, the cold side will be able to reach around minus 20 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, but uh, regarding this uh, cooling plate, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. So I have now uh, the experience of this uh, cold plate. And I know how it is built and uh, what is inside it and how it can perform. And uh, then uh, based on this, I can further progress with my other project, which depends on partially on this uh, cold uh, plate. And it also depends actually on this DC power meter uh, because I want to monitor the power to the Pattier coolers uh, rather carefully. And uh, just as a side note, if you want to get that DC uh, power meter, I put a link in the description of this video, so please check it and then you can uh, buy the PCB uh, and then you can uh, build your own uh, DC power meter. And I uh, put the video link uh, there in the top right corner where you can see the video about this uh, DC power meter and you can get some more information. And also in the description of that other video which is about this DC power meter, you can find the article on my website just if you want to get some extra information. And also in uh, this video and in the description of this video, I have some information about this uh, thing, this cord plate, and also the power supply and uh, the converter uh, on my website. So check the links in the description. There should be a link for my website where I wrote a blog article about this thing. And then you will see uh, some further conclusions on this uh, topic. So I hope that this uh, demonstration and uh, test was useful to you. I hope you can use this device this, despite the fact that it's not as good as it is advertised. So I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.